Thank you all for inviting me again to speak tonight. This is my second year speaking here, and it is such an honor. <coughs> While we are gathered here to honor the beautiful souls who have tragically lost their lives, often violently, I want to talk about the message of hope for the future. My name is Devin Marchant, and I am one of the lucky ones. Growing up transgender, transitioning at a very early age, navigating through high school as stealth, and never really having to endure hateful prejudice or violence. It was always a fear for my parents, but I never really realized how deep and how real their fears truly were. My transition allowed me to live my authentic life, to be happy and pretty much have the same opportunities and success as every other girl my age. What I do know is the love and acceptance of my family has been the cornerstone to my success. But all the love in the world can't keep you safe. While my mom found a doctor to put me on blockers before puberty set in, we were living with a big secret. We even moved to Sonoma, from Sonoma County to El Dorado County so that I could transition as safely as possible. It took finding the courage to attend our first Sacramento P flag meeting, then attending our first Transgender Day of Remembrance here in 2008, to meet mentors like Joanna Michaels, Ben and Rachel Hudson, Rebecca Hogger, and another dear friend who is forever in our hearts and who we are memorializing tonight, Karina Page, who we lost to suicide four years ago. My name has always been Devin, but my middle name was kind of the hiccup. I was always called Devin Ann by my family and always referred to that as myself, but my documents said otherwise. My mom contacted Transgender Law Center for help in early December of 2008, and that Christmas, I unwrapped documents prepared by TLC to change my legal name. I cried, my mom cried, my sister cried, my dad cried. <sighs> the fear of being outed in the local newspaper by publishing my legal name became too real for me though, and it held up filing the paperwork for 15 long months. My mom finally came up with the idea of asking the judge and was granted permission to use the Tahoe Tribune for publication rather than using our local paper. Meanwhile, for my new driver's license in 2009, the DMV marker change for my gender was a breeze. That was the turning point of coming out <coughs> of the shadows and finding my voice by joining TLC for the first Transgender Advocacy Day at the state capitol. Becoming an advocate is scary, but overcoming our fears and talking with legislators and senators and advocating for transgender rights and changing laws by telling our stories is powerful. It became very clear to me how important having legal documents to properly reflect my identity would forever shape my future and my safety. I remember taking part in advocating for passports to reflect our gender without reassignment surgery, then getting my passport issued, which allowed me to apply for my first job at 16. And without having this, I would face being misgendered. Next year, we advocated for the Vile Statistics Act, which was a huge success. I filed for my new birth certificate in January 2012, and it arrived in early April. Every single document that I have reflects who I am. That is the beauty of hope for the future of transgender youth like me. We now have the ability to present ourselves to the world as our true, authentic selves, with a clean slate of legal documents matching our identity and no past records to haunt us. The next hurdle was the importance of AB 1266, which many joined in on Advocacy Day in 2013. Ashton Lee is an amazing st college student who advocated and worked diligently to turn over 6,000 signatures. Ironically, Governor Brown signed the School Success and Opportunity Act in August 12th, while we are at the state capitol ad advocating for, with TLC for AB 420, another bill introduced so that our youth would have a fair chance to succeed at school with protections due to willful defiance policies. We were also advocating for AB 1121, which simplifies the process in eliminating the unnecessary and expansive step of getting court order required for name changes. AB 1121 would make it safer, more private, and less costly by exempting the newspaper public publication requirement. 2014 has been a banner year for our community. The School Success and Opportunity Act went into effect protecting transgender students and allowing them to succeed in school like every other student. 
With health care now being afforded to transgender health, insurance companies can no longer exclude routine care, now covering hormones, mental health, and even gender reassignment surgeries. Laverne Cox stepped up with class and dignity, becoming the voice for transgender in her interview with Katie Couric and also gracing the cover of Time magazine. Cece McDonald has made history with her compelling story, which is now in the process of a documentary film. And then there is our hometown hero, Captain Sage Fox. More and more brave families are sharing their stories, like our dear friends Hillary and Jeff Whittington, the Whittington's family Ryland story, as it's known, which went viral since its release last May with over 7.3 million views on YouTube. When I met them last year at Gender Spectrum, they were in the very beginning of figuring out how to best navigate their journey. Then there were also local kids like Ashton and Jules Gutierrez and national stars like Jazz and Sadie who have been honored for their incredible accomplishments and contributions to trans youth, along with countless others in the media for making a difference, a huge difference. Over the past several years, I have met and been supported by so many wonderful people at PFLAG, Gender Health Center, TLC, Advocacy Day, and the family conferences like Gender Spectrum. It's kind of funny, while I did take a leap of faith outside of my comfort zone and joined two other trans kids and their families, Dr. Michelle Forcier and the amazing author Andrew Solomon on Katie Couric's interview exclusive called Trapped in the Wrong Body, I really don't consider myself as out. The producers agreed to use only my first name and no mention of where I live. My intention was to bring hope for other trans kids who may not have felt secure in coming out to their families or families new in transition. I decided that living my authentic life as Devin and not Devin, the transgender girl, was important to me. But still, I wanted to inspire other families. I was also offered a movie deal, which I turned down because I thought living my authentic self and my safety was more important. Last December, I was both shocked and honored to read my story in the article Diary of a Homecoming Princess in TLC's Authentic Lives magazine. It was a huge shock and a huge honor for me. But this is what I mean about being out in our community, but not being out in the general public. It's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> so this year, um, I have pursued my passion for dance and ballet. I joined a dance company, toured in New York City, and performed for Disney this last summer. I've been blessed with the love of my life, being with me every step of the way and holding my hand when I needed it most. Dreams really can come true. In closing, I would like to say thank you and hats off to all of the incredibly brave transgender adults and especially the youth and their families who so courageously are sharing their personal stories with the media. As TLC stated, without families, we would not be able to win lawsuits, change policies, and change societal attitudes to make the world a more just and equal place. It is my hope that these gatherings will be in the memory of those we have lost and that the numbers will significantly decline with the world embracing our uniqueness as a community. Thank you.